Welcome to Plowman's Backyard. My name is Kendra and today I'm taking you on a garden tour. It's the first week of July and I'm going to show you what my garden is looking like. Not much of harvesting going on, maybe a little bit of lettuce here and there, but I just couldn't wait to show you what a cold climate garden looks like in July. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is the celery and how well it's doing. These again were transplanted and I started them in February. For the most part they're coming along quite nice. And then we have our herbs. So this is our thyme. This is winter thyme. We love growing winter thyme here. I use it a lot in the winter so I will continuously harvest what I can from this. And this is actually what I use for my teas in the winter when I have a sore throat and it is phenomenal for any type of throat infection or cough. Here we actually have the um, curly moss. Now this was actually our dollar store grow kit. These two here that you can see they're doing really well. Um, then we've got the dollar store basil. It's doing phenomenal. We've got lots growing here. This is our summer savory. I start it from seed and then you can see the dill. It's it's doing okay. Not super great but I'm looking forward to that when we get to doing our pickles. We got some onions coming up here. As you can see my broccoli has um, been overtaken by the cabbage moth I think and I need to do some weeding around the fence here. Next we have our cabbages that are doing awesome. So far so good. I may need to cover them. Uh, I only see a little bit of something eating them. Actually there is a little bit of something eating them so I'm going to have to put some diatomaceous earth on those. And here is my elderberry plant that I got from Rem, um, Remy at Rem's Family Farm. So I can't wait to get that into the ground. It's looking great and growing really well. Then we've got a few um, kale. Obviously there's something eating at this again. This is a common thing when you're growing food. Make sure you plant enough that you get a harvest and you're not just feeding the insects or animals. So this is red Russian kale. This is probably my second favorite kale to grow. I just love it. I love that it isn't super curly. Um, it's a really nice taste and a nice texture and I really love growing the red Russian kale. Got four of them here but uh, as you can see this one seems to be quite happy and doing well. So this plant here is my comfrey plant. I've actually cut it back. It was huge incredibly huge I cut a whole bunch off of it and this is the second growth so you want to continuously harvest this dry it comfrey is amazing medicinal herb that every homesteader should have on their property I don't know if you can see it or not but my rutabaga are finally coming up these are extremely behind this year I don't know if I'm going to get much of a harvest but we've had to sow our rutabaga twice now and really they should have been much bigger than what they are but they are coming up this whole row is usually rutabaga and we put a lot in the freezer the next row over here is my beets which they're not doing bad we've got some beets here i'll take out these weeds see even if you have weed cloth you still get weeds and you still have to weed but you can see these are little beets and they're planted at the same time as these little beets and then we've got some more uh, lettuce that I started about three weeks after my lettuce in the raised bed so this is butter crunch lettuce on growing here and I've got some radishes that are almost ready to go actually and then I started this patch of lettuce last week so it's doing really well so this will be a little bit later and what I'm going to be doing is taking this patch here and separating them and putting them down here in this row because um, lettuce tends to transplant really well. Then my next favorite thing to grow is chard. We love chard as most of you know. They are doing really great and we have been harvesting lots of chard and it still is doing really well. And we start these the first within the first week of June. So they're doing really great. And then I've started some more further down there that aren't up yet, but lots of chard in this family. The next thing we have here is the tomatoes. As you can see, the tomatoes are doing exceptional. They didn't look too good, but they always bounce back. Believe it or not, 
tomatoes tend to be like a weed. So no matter what you do, stick them in the ground, most likely they're gonna come back up anyway. But I think I've planted about 35 to 40 tomatoes and we've got some in the greenhouse. I'll show you here, lots of different varieties, cherries, um, beef steak styles, but different colors, different sizes. This here is the grow kit tomato plant. As you can see, it's huge. Um, we've got two more down here and they're growing really well. So you might think that the garden is like really behind, but I'm gonna tell you when you're cold climate gardening, at least how I do it, I don't plant until like about the 10th or 15th of June. So it looks behind, but I guarantee so much produce that I'm not gonna know what to do with it. There's gonna be way too much in the house that I'm gonna, have. I'm gonna be so busy in August, but even though I don't have anything yet, you wait. I'm gonna give you a garden tour in August and you'll be amazed on how fast and how quick things grow here. We're not done yet, so let's go over to the other garden. This is my wild and free grape garden. So all, I have like three or four different varieties of grapes, which I didn't know at the time that they would need so much room. And as much as we tried trellising, they love to just grow this way. So this is a never ending battle. We've got to figure out what to do with our grapes. We do get lots of grapes from them. I'm going to see and I'll show you. Yes. So lots lots of grapes coming as per usual and grapes are really easy to propagate too so you know you don't need to buy too many plants and you can just keep continuously adding to your grape garden one of the very last things that i planted in the garden was my potatoes and they don't take long at all to really grow last year from this patch alone we had about 200 pounds of potatoes they are coming along beautifully we're gonna have loads of potatoes husband will be very happy with that um, we've got white and red potatoes planted on each side here so this normally is my corn patch and i didn't do corn this year because it was so late and so wet that i wasn't going to waste my seeds what i've got here is the leftover potatoes that i didn't have room to plant in this section and then along here i've got um, winter squash here. We've got some more winter squash growing there. There's a nice size one there. And that's all that's going to be here. I do need to weed it. As you can see, we need to weed whack. And then I've got six trees here, which are my pear trees. So in here we have our peppers, our watermelon, and tomatoes. Tomatoes are doing really well. They love the heat. Peppers are doing really great. Again, these are grow kit peppers. Uh, we have a pepper over here that is coming along nicely. Lots of tomato plants. I put my largest variety of tomato plants in the greenhouse because they do take the longest. Again, another huge pepper plant. And then we do have a little banana pepper coming, if you can see it right there coming on and this is the watermelon which i'm not sure if we're going to get anything from it but it's stars and moon watermelon and we'll see i'm not super successful with watermelon i do know they love water but they actually really like to be hot and dry so i tried to grow it in here this year this entire patch here is usually my cucumbers we have sowed cucumbers twice oh i think i have one coming up they're really behind this year. Something that seems to be eating it. But usually I have this thing packed with cucumbers. So I'm not sure if it's too late to get another cucumber seeds and put them in the ground. This over here is a grow kit cucumber plant, which I've got one cucumber, but it looks like it's dying. So it didn't really transplant well. And that's why I don't typically grow cucumbers and plant them in the ground. I usually always start them off by seed. I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't have cucumbers this year. So we'll see how it goes. I've um, got more onions coming up. As you can see, I haven't weeded yet, but we have zucchini, zucchini, um, zucchinis here. This is my bean patch here. 
doesn't look like much, but man, that's a lot of beans. Um, I've had to re-sow a couple because some animals were getting to them and eating them. They'll fill out quite nice. They don't take long, which is one thing that I really do love about growing beans. So this is, tends to be where I grow all of my onions and we usually have a ton of onions for the winter. Plus I've got a couple other different type of squash, one here and one over here coming up. And then I've got about four or five apple trees that I planted and then some wild apples. Yeah, lots of apples coming. I got another variety, different variety here and one out front. And then we've got my little blueberry patch, which I've got six blueberry plants. There's lots of berries coming on. So I've got, there's a blueberry plant there. Oh, this one is loaded. I don't know if you can see it. Another blueberry over here. And then I've got one over here. I can take you to see this one. Another load of blueberries coming on which is great. I love blueberries. And, ooh, looks like I'm going to have to pick my raspberries. My raspberry patch is not doing well this year. I need to get in there with the weed eater, but there I do see some red ones in here, and I get oodles of berries. It is one thing about having such a big garden space and not having the time is if you can't seem to manage your garden, it's better off to go smaller than bigger because why why plant everything if you can't actually utilize it? So that's a reason why I love using the weed barrier. It's not the fact that I don't know how to weed. It's finding the time between work and rain and homeschooling. And then, you know, it's the nicest time of year. You want to get out and enjoy some of the summer and go swimming and boating and fishing and camping and all those things. So yeah, people might say that I cheat by using that, but you know what? You don't cheat because I feel like I'm cheating myself out on experiences and joy and experiencing life if I had to just stick with gardening and wasn't able to leave because, I mean, I talked about gardening in my modern homesteading video. Part of it is, you know, People have to have two incomes these days to be able to live where they live and buy the things that they need. And it's really hard to do that and garden for yourself. And that's why many people don't do it. So if you can find ways to cut some time, do it. Who cares what other people think? At least you're doing it. At least you're gardening. And you know what? Yes, I may not spend a whole lot of time, but as you can see, I've got a lot of work cut out for me and I still don't get to everything that I need to do. So unfortunately, I haven't had a weed eater this year that works. Hubby's going to be going out and getting me one. And you can see, even with my raspberry patch, it's being affected. So because I haven't had the time to do a whole lot of weeding, or it's just it's part of the way that it goes. So if you can't manage having a big garden, then don't. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But try and do what you can. Each year, add a little bit. Even my asparagus suffered this year just because I couldn't get to weeding it between this the smoke that's been around from all the fires in Quebec to um, all the rain we've been getting it just wasn't happening so we did have some harvest out of our asparagus but definitely not as much as we had in the past and that's just the way it goes from year to year it's different so this is my very sad sad asparagus patch I've got four rows believe it or not of asparagus you can see um, that they have now gone to seed the weeds had just overtaken this I've weeded it maybe three times but with all the rain I haven't gotten to maintaining it so a lot of them have gone to seed and you know what that's okay that's great they'll be there next year waiting and ready for me to get to them and then over here I'm going to take you and show you the Haskap area and currants um, that I showed you earlier in one of our shorts when we harvested our Haskaps. so this here is a little grape that I propagated about two years ago it's doing really great. It's ready to get into the ground and I'll have a new grapevine um, to plant somewhere. So easy peasy to definitely do your own cuttings for grapes and start new plants on your own. So here is my garlic. I have been out once already and have gotten rid of all these scapes. Obviously these guys were just teeny weeny little things and now I've got to come out and harvest a second harvest of the scapes, the ones that I didn't get earlier. I know it looks like a weed fest, whatever. I don't really know what this kind of weed is here, but they're easy to pull out and they don't affect the growing of the 
the garlic. Basically the patch is about this big here and then it comes and it goes straight over into here. I think we planted about 150 garlic last year so we should get at least double that this year. My current bushes, which they're doing pretty well. We've got the black currants coming along nicely. We've got the red currants as well coming along nicely. Um, I have the pink champagne in here as well. So it's a pretty big current patch. These can also be really easily um, propagated and I'm hoping to do that with my, the one currants that I like the most anyways. And then back in here is all of the hascaps. So these bushes here are my hascaps. We've got six bushes. Um, you want to plant two different varieties at least. There's some hascaps still coming along. We did a big harvest last week and there's still more popping along there. These here are my cherry bushes. I've got four of them. This one here, we're getting our first cherries we've ever had. We planted these about four years ago. Just going to show you. Look at those cherries. So these are um, sour cherries, meaning that they're more for pies. The fact that we have these, I'm so happy. They're just, they're doing so nicely. I'm very happy. They were loaded, loaded with flowers this year. And these are a very hardy um, cherry bush. That's why we went with bushes instead of a tree. We've got a few different varieties. We've got um, like the Romeo, the, the Romeo and Juliet series anyway. But um, yeah, four years and we're getting our first cherry. So super, super excited. I should try one. I actually should. I don't know what they taste like yet, but still exciting when you get something new growing that you've put time and effort into. And over here is one of my gooseberry plants. I bought this one actually in New Brunswick when we went last summer. So this is only like a year old. Um, this is a wild gooseberry, which is why I planted it next so that they can pollinate one another. But I also even just propagated a gooseberry that has no thorns, which I'm super excited about. You can see all the thorns on this thing. So I'm looking forward to a thornless gooseberry. It feels ripe. It's very soft. Like I said, I've never had them before. I'm going to try it out. It's quite soft. I don't know what it's going to be like. Should I try it? Who thinks I should try it? Ooh, there's a little wiggly worm. We don't need wiggly worms. We don't want to eat wiggly worms. Squish them. Squish them gone. My first ever cherry from our cherry bushes. Who thinks I should eat it? Yeah, I know. I wonder how sour it really is. Now, the interesting thing is these might be really sour and bitter, but they're Brix rating. So if you don't know what a Brix rating is, it's like the sugar content and the nutritional content. When it's a high Brix, it's more nutritious for you and better for you. And these sour cherries have a very high Brix reading. So here goes nothing. Oh, it's not that bad. I think the grapes are more sour than this. Wow. It's actually quite nice. Anyways, there's a couple more here coming on. Maybe I'll send Hannah out to pick one, see if she likes it. How exciting. Cherries. So the next thing on the list, last but not least, well, there's one more tree I'm going to show you, but these are my hazel birds. So these were planted at the same time. You need to plant two in order to cross pollinate. These are like, they're basically like a hazelnut, just a like very small, like a miniature hazelnut. And they are mixed between a hazelnut and a filbert. And that's where it gets its name, hazelbert. So what happened to this one? The plow got it. What happened to this one? It loves this spot. So you can see, I want to say this thing is probably like 12 feet tall. It's hard to tell, but it is. The hazel birds, they get good clusters of um, nuts on them and we collect them. I do have a video on the hazel birds, when to harvest, how to harvest. I'll leave that at the end of this video. 
but you can see we've got some clusters coming on of the hazel birds. We get a lot from this particular bush. We do get a lot from the other one as well. They are very happy here. So this is a very cold hardy um, bush to get your nuts. Really happy with growing it. There's another cluster here you can see and another one in there somewhere but this thing will be full completely full in the autumn so this is over on our little bush you can see here we still get in clusters there's one right there we've got another cluster here another one over there one two like this they're just full of clusters they'll be completely full in the in the fall. One thing that I actually recommend if you're thinking of your homestead of putting up privacy bushes or cedar bushes, boxwoods, whatever you're thinking of doing for privacy, plant things that will give you food. So you can see this thing has grown within four years. It grows wide. You put them close together. You're not going to see anything um, in a few years. Like these will eventually kind of combine and collide together and form a nice fence line but you're not just getting a privacy bush you are getting food that you can eat even with the sour cherries they can grow about 12 feet tall as well and if you plant them relatively close together you're going to get the same thing same thing with the hascaps the hascaps grow so fast within three to four years and you're getting a ton of berries and a great privacy barrier at the same time so think about that if you're wanting to put up a privacy fence with some sort of bushes Go with fruit or nuts. So this is the very last tree that we planted here on our homestead. This is a Cortland apple tree. Not one of the hardiest, but it seems to do really well. Survive the winters so far, but we are getting our very first Cortland apples on this tree. Now, we're not, we don't have a whole lot coming on. I want to say I've seen six apples on it, but you only get a couple the first year and then it just increases every year after that. I need to learn how to spray because you can see something, well, I guess not really anything as well. I guess there are something is eating it or it's got some sort of apple scab going on. I love using Cortland apples for applesauce. The sweetest apples. They are going to be fantastic. And I'm totally looking forward to this. We did prune it last winter and we still need to continue to prune this thing. And we're going to need to weigh it down so that it's not going to grow straight tall. And it's nice when it's young because these branches are still flexible. So we're just going to need to put um, a couple weights down and just weigh them down and eventually they will stay just like this. So we need to do that, put some weights on it this um, summer, fall so that we can basically you're training it the way that you want it to grow so that you're able to reach the apples on the tree. Not only do I grow fruit, but I grow a lot of flowers. We have a lot of flower beds here at Plowman's Backyard. Most of the flowers that I do have are for pollinators. I love to entice the pollinators to come to our place to pollinate our food. But also some of these flowers are also edible as teas, great for tinctures, as well as I have lots of roses and they smell so nice. You can't believe the smell of these roses. And why I planted these roses, not just because they look nice, not just because that they smell nice, but these will give us rose hips for rose hip tea. And believe it or not, if you go for the more natural vitamin C's, most of your natural vitamin C supplements come from rose hips. So we can have rose hips for our own grown vitamin C. We can use um, this in teas and drink it as such or make it into a powder. I haven't done that yet but rose hip tea will also give you a good boost of vitamin C for those winter months. So this bed has gone wild with weeds. What can I say? I've got some more devil's ear lettuce planted. These were planted much later than my others. Um, we've got some outrageous lettuce growing here, some loose leaf lettuce. Last year I planted a carrot that I wanted for seeds. So I planted it here, I let it grow for two years and I collected my own carrot seeds. Now, I didn't obviously get all of the seeds, but they actually sowed themselves this year. Lots of little baby carrots coming up everywhere because the wind blew the seeds everywhere. So I actually didn't have to plant carrots. Um, they're coming up by themselves 
and they're going to be a little bit later but that's okay the nice thing about this garden in here is most of it is coming back just from the seeds that they sowed themselves except for my lettuce and stuff that I planted I've got a weed around that not too big of a deal these carrots are actually looking lovely so I'm not going to pull them out until they're ready these here are some radishes and I planted radish here last year this was kind of like my seed garden that I planted carrots I planted a couple lettuce I planted some radishes that I just left to go to seed to collect seed so this was my seed garden last year this year, I haven't really put much effort into it. I thought maybe I could do some late season lettuce in this one this year. The other thing that we do have lots of here is um, this plant here is actually a bee balm. And so we have two or three different types of bee balm, which are great for um, teas. There's one here, it's about to open. The bees love them. Uh, where is it there? Right here. Um, that's a bee balm. They'll open up and you can actually save the um, petals from these flowers and eat them or dry them, make them into a tea, or you can put them in a salad fresh. So I try to gear most of my flowers, not just for beauty and scent, but for um, purpose for eating or medicinal reasons. Well, that's it. That's the garden tour for July, first week of July here at Plowman's Backyard. You might not think it's very much, but give it a few weeks and it's going to look great. Got a weed eater coming. I'm going to be cleaning up these areas. Things are going to be growing and I'm super excited. Look around for August garden tour and just see the difference of what is coming up and what is growing and what we can harvest. And uh, you'll know too that you can grow if you're living in a cold climate here in Canada.